The four-year-old girl, held at knife point for 28 hours, was rescued and taken to hospital with minor stab wounds. Her captor, Errol Walker, was hit by two police marksman's bullets, but not badly hurt. The decision to storm the flat in North Holt was tonight criticised by some neighbours, who claimed the police had overreacted. The siege began on Christmas morning, after the child's mother staggered from the flat with stab wounds, and she died later. As the siege entered its second day, police were confident it would end peacefully. Walker was still talking as police showed they weren't armed. But he refused a woman friend's plea to give himself up. You're surrounded, she said. And police were taking no chances. Armed men moved to position and firemen had a safety net at the ready after further threats from Walker against his four-year-old hostage. The stress of the siege showed when Walker brandished his knife at police, who were still hoping their waiting game would pay off. But the siege was to end as it began with violence. Walker, crouching in his doorway, made a dash along the balcony for a police riot shield. As he raced back, police came out of their hiding places to pounce and missed him. Then seeming hesitation about what to do next. Despite renewed threats from Walker against his hostage, they stormed the flat with stun grenades. shots rang out in the confusion. Walker was hit twice. After 29 hours, the siege was over. Carleen was carried out, suffering from two minor stab wounds. She's now recovering in hospital. Walker's limp form was dragged to another ambulance and taken away. He's not badly hurt. Police had to calm people on the estate. One woman tried to attack them with a knife as feelings ran high. Things became quieter when they were told Carlene was still alive. Some of them are saying the police missed opportunities to end the siege earlier, and when they did go in, there was no need to use guns. Simon Cole, ITN, Northolt. Within the last half hour, the police have issued a statement strongly denying either hesitating or overreacting. They say they had to change their earlier policy of wait and see when Walker threatened to stab his young hostage. Circumstances changed it for us. We didn't change it, circumstances changed it for us. And I think that uh, we had no option. Once he'd come out, as I said to you earlier, that we'd considered this option, that we then had to go in, in the interests of saving the life of this young child. You spoke of a prompt entry, but in fact it was nearly 30 seconds. Well. Uh, and there was a great deal of hesitation. What was that all about? Well, I know, I don't accept that totally. The whole period uh, from beginning of the incident of him coming out to the police action within the premises was only 45 seconds. Uh, I think that you would agree with me that, that in all the circumstances, bearing in mind that they had to go through a closed door, that that was remarkably quick. A leading expert on police siege tactics tonight questioned whether the police should have taken an earlier opportunity to end the siege. Michael Yardley analysed the storming for ITN. Well, um, it seems odd that this, this sort of eventuality had not been pre-planned, or indeed if it had been pre-planned, that they weren't able to put um, some sort of plan into action rather more rapidly than in fact they did. But nevertheless, they weren't able to. And it appears that once they'd failed to um, stop him going back into the flat, they had actually made um, an aggressive move towards him. Now, we see Walker has been considering what he should do. Now, he's moving out of his flat to make a grab for the shield. Now, unfortunately, the police come back, they, they try and cut him off, but they don't, they don't manage to. Now, we can see he's at the door now, talking to them, and is it possible that he's threatening the little girl's life? Now, the policeman appears, the R1 there, appears to be taking orders from someone else who's out of shot. And we see him break the window, and five seconds later, the stun grenade goes in. Now another officer comes with a sledgehammer to try and gain entrance to the building. So 
saw one of the grenades going off then. Now here is the main problem here. It seems to be taking them an awfully long time to get into that flat. About 10 seconds, in fact, before the first officer manages to gain entry. And to put it bluntly, I mean, does it look like they knew what they were doing? Well, I think it looks as if they could have done with a little bit more practice of this sort of specific operation. And I think one of the things, one of the problems perhaps with police forces across Britain at the moment is that many officers are asked to do a job like this on a part-time basis. Whereas, for example, um, soldiers in the Special Air Service, when they're not actually dealing with an incident, which thankfully is very rare, they're practicing for incidences which have not yet arisen.